Good morning. So, um, welcome to View of My Nightlight, because I'm actually asleep and in bed, but Twitter woke me up, so I'm going to talk about something really quick. Um, this is uh, one of my late night talks, and I'm going to uh, really quick talk about a writing craft principle called the joy of idiocy. Um, and what this is, is I got asked a question by a buddy down in, uh, by a buddy down in Texas about whether it was better to do uh, exposition or dialogue as a way to convey information. Now, in writing, um, there's a there's a a rule: show don't tell. Right? It is always better to demonstrate something than it is to tell somebody something. You know, don't have someone give a lecture. You know about oh my if only you know the dimensional rifts haven't opened and New York became plagued with dinosaurs that is much vastly inferior than having an introductory scene where one of your characters is almost eaten by a New York don you know by a dinosaur in Yonkers um, now this principle applies to information mechanics and conveying information mechanics uh, as well and what this works is is the joy is a principle called the joy of idiocy you can't always show everything you know you will need to tell somebody something in your story and for this the always 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 best option and this is actually like a law of writing craft is that it is better at all times and in all places to to borrow some of uh some some lutheran theological talk there uh to have to explain something to someone in the story than it is to tell the reader directly. Um, when you are doing exposition, when you're just telling um, what you're doing, you know, the story is not progressing, you are pausing the story to give information, and that's bad, right? The, the, the goal of writing is to always have your reader as engaged as possible and to be have them coming along with your characters as possible. And the joy of idiocy principle is there's you put somebody in the story or there is somebody in the story who does not know the information that you need to convey. So in the story, you have them, you, you discuss it with them. Um, uh, when my, and this is the, the joy of idiocy. You have an idiot. And as you explain to the idiot, you know, in your story, uh, the person filling the role of the idiot in the story, then you aren't treating your reader like the idiot. Instead, you are inviting the reader to come along on this part of the story, which includes a revelation of the information, as opposed to the alternative, which is to make your reader the idiot. We're going to pause, and because you don't know this, and you really need to, there's this side. Um, this is very much a relatively modern um, innovation in writing craft uh, even really really amazing writers as early as you know the 50s don't under don't use this principle but it's it's become a hard and fast rule as writing better modern prose so even though you're going to if you read classics you're going to read Tolkien there are info there's relatively info dumps of plenty and it would seem that way but if you actually then read the Silmarillion and look at how much backstory there is, a ton of that is not told and not explained. Um, even when the kid, even when the main characters are in mortal peril and they're they're in faith, calling out for the Valar, the archangels in charge of, of Tolkien's world, he doesn't pause and explain. And now Bilbo is by cry, by crying out um, Aluvatar, Bilbo is expressing a faith of prayer for divine intervention in his mortal peril. No, he doesn't say it. He just says, you know, he Frodo just cries out, you know, to God for God to help, and you know he makes it through. Um, a good examples of this, if you read Jim Butcher's Dresden Files, um, the main character starts off as a young and relatively inexperienced wizard, and there's a character who has to constantly explain the rules of magic to him. Now, what Jim Butcher is actually doing with Bob the Skull. Which is another joke. Um, what the character is actually doing is uh, that the writer is conveying the information, but because he's conveying it in an entertaining way, because his lab assistant is a talk is a is a disembodied skull who will explain things to the poor dumb main character um, in a in a way that's snarky and you know and involves some some banter. Now that's much more enjoyable than what you would see like in a 1950s scientific movie. 
uh, in which case you would have somebody walk on and say, "Well, as you know, Bob, since all of the all, since all of the Gronks of the planet Klatu Varadu have you know, always lived this way, this means this and this and this." All right now, that's a, a that's kind of the joy of idiocy, but really that's a something called a talking head, which is another no-no in writing craft. So when you're going to be explaining something to your idiot, you don't do exposition to your idiot either. It's better to have them in a dialogue, um, if that makes sense, where the, where the person being explained to interacts or challenges um, or you know in a, some other way deals with the information instead of simply receiving it passively, in which case you've just thrown a really thin veil over the fact that you're still making your reader the idiot. You know, have them challenge or question and even if the even if the idiot receiving the information doesn't do you know doesn't provide any new information for the reader, you're fulfilling another one of those laws of writing craft, and that is something that Kurt Vonnegut put really well. Uh, every line should do one of three things: uh, it should advance the plot, you know, reveal. It should basically um, convey information. It should advance the plot, reveal character. Or um, oh, I'm forgetting the third thing because I literally was asleep till my phone started beeping. But so that's kind of the joy of idiocy. Um, in my current work and project, I have I'm I'm dealing the the center of my story is the backstory of the world, and so I have a ton of info dump to convey, and I have. I mean, every one of my main characters has something interesting, you know, hidden in their past. And rather than info dump on any of them, in a moment when, you know, as a calm moment, when they're simply buried in a, you know, and when they're simply buried in a, in the ruins of a starship while being hunted, um, and trying to avoid the, the escapes of the steps of a, of a deadly curse, they have a moment where they get, they basically get the night to rest. And during that time, Two of the characters who were present for um, my uh, for my lady noble's background um, and have witnessed it have a discussion about her background, in which her background is revealed. But they have a conflict in which she's begging somebody, you know, please don't tell anybody, and the other one relates it, you know, basically reads it back to her as this is why I respect you, this is why. I you know, this is why I care about, you know, what happens to you. And so because I care and because I respect you, I will honor your wishes. And so you've got the, uh, you've got the joy of EAC principle. Um, you're revealing character. You're revealing the relationship, which is another one of those things that you want to do whenever possible. Um, and you're conveying the information. And that's one of the joy of idiocy things. I also have got the, the, the group has a 14-year-old kid who's tagging along, and he sometimes becomes the idiot. And then I've got people from outside of the culture, and they need to have stuff explained to them. And, and so in the dynamic between the characters, in the back and forth, if I bury the information in there, it goes down much easier than if I sat down and did a lump, you know, lump dump. All right, I hope that explains the joy of idiocy. I didn't mean to talk this long. I tend to ramble. See my books. <laughs> Seriously, I write. I, I can't. I tried to write a short story, and it came out as an eighty thousand word novel. So you're gonna have to forgive this one. All right, so this was talk on writing craft. Yeah, welcome to my nightlight. Have a good day.